So today I want to talk about Fast Times at Ridgemont High. This is a 1982 American coming of age film. It's directed by Amy Heckerling and it's definitely a coming of age film. Uh, first something that I'd like to tell you is that I'm a huge coming of age genre fan and I love most of the films by John Hughes except Ferris Bueller. Do not like that film. Maybe we'll talk about it someday. But I like Breakfast Club and Sixteen Candles and I've loved Days and Confused and the sequel that Linklater Greta released years later Everybody wants some. Love those films. So coming of age genre is something that I like very much and I find it uh, very enjoyable and I've always revered this genre but you do not get a lot of this kind of film just as I've said uh, after watching Breakfast Club I've seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off with a lot of expectation and I didn't like it. Uh, the thing about this film is it's a 1982 film is before any of the John Hughes film he has ever directed so you can say that this is definitely a pioneer in this genre because I believe there are not a lot of these kind of films you know this 80s film with this 80s access that you get uh, in any of the films so yeah it's definitely monumental in that sense and I'm gonna be completely honest uh, I saw this film because I saw that it was actually preserved in the American National Library of Congress so I thought that's supposed to be very prestigious and exclusive so that's why I wanted to see this film and it's a really good film uh, it's surprisingly funny it's at times heartwarming but it doesn't try too hard to be and on the other hand this film is also quite interested in the things that these kids that in that era felt and it doesn't tone it down and it's a uh, doesn't take it too it doesn't take itself too seriously but it also has a surprise amount of heart and this film also uh, tries to deal with some issues that are quite mature and you do not expect this kind of uh, things in this kind of coming age film and definitely it's a thing of the genre and uh, it may be a sign of that time but the film that other films I've seen in this genre are usually very light-hearted and deal with just typical teenage issues but not this film this film is actually quite invested in the life of the character and the way they are feeling and most of the character even though they play a different arch type but I believe that you can always empathize with this kind of people because in some way or another in some place of your life you have seen this kind of film uh, people and I believe that for a reason it's actually a quite special film and above all I think it uh, at times is hilarious and I think now this film is remembered for uh, uh, just ushering in very famous people who have went on to become big budget Hollywood actors for example Nicolas Cage is in here for a very short scene I think he's even here for like four or five seconds and then there's Sean Penn and Forrest Whitaker so all these people have went on to win Academy Award in their life so there's that and I think uh, with all these kind of characters and there are a lot of them and it's definitely an ensemble effect but the top billing gets to Sean Penn and I think that is actually very well earned because his character is like the surfer slacker type and I think he's quite fun he's sort of detached from this whole story and so when the heavy things are happening and uh, you know characters are getting in different kind of situations and there are different kind of motivations and they're doing different things I think he always makes you laugh and brings up sort of fresh air and I think that he is definitely the MVP of this film there's no doubt about it so I believe almost all the actors have acted quite well and particularly Sean Penn st stays with you and besides that Jennifer Jason Lee is also very good and Phoebe Cates is for this film and I think she is very famous for this film because of one particular scene and I'm sure you've already seen that seen that particular scene I'm talking about if not then don't think about it but I believe overall First Time in Richmond High is actually quite good film and if you think of it as a pioneer in this genre I think it's excellent and I'm going to give it 
four out of five.